Hi everyone, this is Alex Karras from Skeptico.com and I want to let you know that I just published this interview with remote viewer Paul Smith. And there's a couple points in there that I think are going to be of interest to people who follow parapsychology and in particular remote viewing. I, now, if you don't know, and I'm sure you probably do, but Paul Smith is the real deal. Former Army intelligence officer, one of the original people, the Stargate super secret program that the military was running. He's published this book. He's published another new one that we interviewed about on the show, Practical Guide, Practical Guide to Remote Viewing. But what I thought would catch the interest of a lot of folks out there is I asked him about this. That is the recent remote viewing session that Courtney Brown did on 9-11. So it's quite interesting what he had to say. Give a listen. Here it is. You reference in the book, Courtney Brown, who is another remote viewer, came on later in the in the project. Courtney Brown, under his organization called the Farsight Institute, recently released an extensive remote viewing of the 9-11 events and came to the conclusion that, to kind of keep it short, that it was an inside job, that it was not as it's told to us and that there were other people involved at a, either an intelligence level outside the United States or at some other agency, but that it wasn't as it has been portrayed to people. Well, I guess there's a bunch of questions about that. One, have you remote viewed 9-11 and can you confirm or deny anything that Courtney Brown found out? I guess I'll just start with that. Okay, so 9-11 is something I've, I keep trying to avoid and still get fights about, but uh, first thing I want to make clear, um, Courtney Brown actually was never in the military program. He came along later in the remote viewing history. In terms of his project on 9-11, I really don't trust the data there, or at least the conclusions, right? First off, I don't see any real reason for thinking that 9-11 happened any other way than the official report is. People think I'm naive in that. But if you if you look at the conspiracy theory ideas, they're, they're crazy. I mean, the idea that the building was imploded is just ridiculous. In a way, what you've done is what I run into all the time is, and what you suggested at the beginning of the show is the problem that the, the reductionists run into. It's like, okay, how did it happen? How did it happen? How did it happen? No, I don't have to say how it happened. All I have to do is falsify the existing theory. Well, then yeah. we can just stick to the evidence and look at Building 7. And Building 7, who has that has nothing more than couch fires, is a 47-story steel frame building that collapses yeah. into its own frame. There is no explanation for that. But more importantly, we can just look at the investigation because, like so many things, it's not the crime, it's the cover-up that reveals all. You can mess up a remote viewing project by having a theory to begin with, you know, a, a, an agenda, so to speak, right? You start off with a certain theory about what happened. Now, Courtney Brown says he didn't have um, exactly. he didn't have a preconceived notion about it. I'm not sure that's true, but whatever. The problem is it, it comes out in the analysis. Um, you know, I, I normally don't like to talk about other remote viewers in public in, in a negative terms, but I was at the, uh, the conference of the Society for Scientific Exploration where Courtney Brown got up on the stand and said he did research that showed that by November of, I think it was 2009, 2011, something like that, that the San Francisco Air, uh, earthquake or airport would be destroyed by an earthquake, right? He got up on the stand, claimed his remote viewing showed that. As we all know, San Francisco airport is still in perfectly good condition, right? He actually has some pretty decent remote viewers working, but I don't think that their results necessarily consistently show what Courtney Brown thinks they do. Have you seen their results? They're unedited videotape of their results, and I, I don't know that anyone could really look at their remote viewing and come to a different conclusion. It's pretty cut and dried. I will admit I haven't watched the videos on these. I've seen other work that his folks have done, and they do pretty decent remote viewing, but then he comes to a different conclusion than I would. So we also talked about a number of other things regarding remote viewing, whether there was possibly an overlay, whether that was a problem, whether 
uh, Courtney's claim that he had to block an intercept of the remote viewing was possible, and you can only imagine what Dr. Smith had to say about that. A bunch of other stuff, including his remote viewing of a UFO, although he's still very suspicious and skeptical of that. A lot of good stuff you might want to check out for the full interview. Go to Skeptico.com. It's free to download, listen to it, iTunes, Stitcher, whatever you want. All that stuff is obviously available. You'll get it right there. And then I have a number of other interviews on remote viewing, if you haven't seen before, Paul Smith. Oh, Stephen Schwartz a while back, uh, John Ronson, and where is Joe McGonigal is always really great stuff. So all that's there as well. But in particular, I thought you would want to know about this 9-11 remote viewing because it caught my attention. It was interesting to hear what Paul had to say about it. So there you go. Hope you enjoy it. Please check it out at uh, Skeptico.com. There it is.